Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be using Tonic Studio's new delicate dresser um, die set, which they released during their birthday week. And I won't be just making the dresser, but I'm actually going to be turning it into a little mini album. So here's a quick look at the mini album. I've decorated it on all four sides and on the front there are two photo frames which are interchangeable with the decorative frames but when you open it up you actually have two mini albums. The first half has seven pages and the second half has six. So that is where we are headed with all of this. So let me first start off by showing you which pieces from the die set that you'll need. And um, this is your main piece here. So this really um, creates sort of the body of the dresser. Um, the second cut uses the same die, but I've just cut off um, the section that is would normally be the side of the dresser. So you can see here, this is how your dresser would normally be configured. And I've taken the same die, cut it twice, but then I trimmed off that, what would be the right hand side. Um, we won't need that piece because that's where the spines of our mini album will end up going. This piece will make up the front mini album. So um, it measures three and 11 16th inches tall and nine and a half wide. And you'll need to score that at two and a half, seven and a half, and eight and three quarters. And so as you can see here, that's going to be the front of our dresser. It's gonna wrap around to the side and then fold uh, right into the dresser and become our uh, first mini album. And then we'll need a piece that um, the decorative pieces. And I'll um, kind of show you, I've already done all the die cutting, but I'll show you all the pieces. So here are the legs. And so what I've already done is gone ahead and die cut uh, one piece in full and then um, I die cut several additional pieces which I glued together and stacked and that's so that um, those legs can be more strong and I've also die cut a decorative piece so that's this one right here I'm using a light blue pearlescent paper and so I'll go ahead and put that on the piece that's whole and for the extra layers what I did was I just die cut that top portion um, that's the hinge and I trimmed it enough so that the hinge can still fold over nice and flat so there isn't any extra bulk um, so that ultimately means you need to trim below the score line that the die will put in there for you and that gets everything to um, stack up nicely and it just adds some additional support under that uh, glue tab and because our mini album is going to have some extra weight because of the mini album pages and all the photos that are going to be inside we want to make sure that these legs hold up <clears throat> and any extra bits that are hanging off, I'm just going to trim off with my um, utility blade. You can, of course, use a craft knife if that's what you have. And then I'm going to actually, um, since we're not using uh, the swinging closure, I'm going to inlay the circle that's a die cut out of that, put that right back in, and um, add one of these little decorative pieces to cover that up so that it looks very intentional. And I've done the same thing with the ornate or decorative pieces on the top as well. So I've just doubled up on um, some of my heavyweight cardstock. I was using 110 pound and um, just stacked that behind the pretty decorative layer. This die set is really unique because it does come with this set of dies that actually creates little swinging um, closures for you and you don't even need to use a brad. So there is one die that will cut out these little circles and I'm actually um, stacking it three high instead of just two, the single die will cut two circles out for you. But what I decided to do was actually 
double up on um, the swinging portion. So I'm just putting a dec the decorative piece. And this decorative piece I think is actually meant to decorate a different die, but I really like it. So, um, so I'm doubling up on the uh, swinging closure piece. And that's why I wanted to add an extra layer to the um, smaller circles because that will give enough allowance for um, the swinging piece to actually swing nice and smoothly. Okay, so here are the front panels. I've already created one um, of the photo frame version and one of the decorative version. And the pieces you'll need are, um, there are several different decorative panels, so you can choose any of the ones that you like. I chose this one because it has fewer attached areas to the side so it's going to be easy to kind of snip off the decorative portion. So now you have a frame. I've got one layer in my blue which is my pretty um, side. I'm going to uh, attach some acetate to it and the acetate I cut to three and a half by two and one eighth and I'm just using some red line tape to attach that. I have um, two additional um, of those frame panels that I've already prepared, those were cut out of 110 pound. And um, then I've got, these are the uh, two white panels that are 110 pound right here. So I'm going to use my strong score tape to uh, get adhesive all the way to the edge, but I'll ultimately end up using some liquid glue to adhere those together as well. And I'll, um, one of the things that I don't think I mention all that often, but whenever I handle my dry adhesive, I always try to hold it from the side so that I'm not touching the adhesive itself. Because as you know, when you try to work with low tack tape, you the more you touch it or stick it to something else, um, the less sticky it becomes. And so if you want your adhesive to be really, really strong, then you want to make sure that um, you're not handling the sticky side of the adhesive. And there I forgot to put my um, liquid adhesive, so I uh, peeled that back really quickly just to um, add a nice strip of liquid adhesive. And since I do have the dry adhesive going all the way to the edges, I know that there aren't going to be any gaps. It's going to be nice and um, flat. And I um, can be a little bit looser with my liquid adhesive, so it's ultimately a little bit less messy. The piece I have here is the exact same decorative panel, but what I've already done is I've already punched out a 3 16th um, inch hole from all four uh, corners, and I'm just transferring those locations to my frame. And what I'm going to do is punch a hole, a three, and I'm going to use my big bite to do it. You can see it's set to 3 16th of an inch. And I'm just going to carefully line up my punch so that I'm punching through the holes that I just marked out. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can actually embed a um, magnet into each of those holes. And what this achieves is it allows you to um, have a magnetic closure or, um, you know, just put a magnet onto your project, but not have the bulk of that magnet um, come through. So if I were to just place the magnet on the this frame and then cover it up with another piece of cardstock, then um, the extra depth of that magnet is going to be visible and I'm not going to be able to get something that's completely flush and um, neat and tidy. And since these photo frames are going to sit on the front and the back of our dresser as decorations, I want them to sit as flush to the, um, the dresser as possible. Also, because the magnets need to be so close to the edge 
of the border. So here you can see I'm inlaying my magnets right in. And I just used, um, a second ago, I just used a little paintbrush um, like I'm doing here. And my ta paintbrush um, tapers. And so it's a little bit wider as it gets closer to the brush end. And so I can just um, slot that in and actually um, widen the hole that I punched ever so slightly. So you can always do that. And here's a close up of um, how nice and flush and neat these magnets are embedded. But as I was saying, see how close it is to the border of the frame? If I was to just glue these magnets right onto the frame and then try to cover it with a, another piece of cardstock, there isn't that much paper uh, towards the edge of the frame to really get a nice seal. And so it's likely there's going to be a little bit of a gap um, where the magnet might show. And so the other reason to do it this way is you get something nice and flush and you get a proper seal when you cover this up. Now, when I cover um, this with my last panel, what I'm going to use is a 65 pound um, paper. And the reason why I went with a lighter weight paper is because I don't want the um, this layer to be so thick that it really weakens the magnet. Um, I'm using small magnets. They're not that strong to begin with. So I want to make sure that um, it needs to go through as thin a layer as possible. And of course, if you're turning these into photo frames, you only want to glue on three edges, leaving the top edge open so that um, you can slip your photo in. My top tip um, that I didn't do because I didn't think about it until after uh, I'd already created two of them is to make sure that your magnets are oriented the same way, meaning the polarity is the same. So the negative and positive are the same um, on all of them. I didn't pay attention to that until, you know, I, I was lucky that I thought about it um, before I made the last two that I'm filming on camera here, but by making them oriented the same way, so the polarity is the same, that means that each of these frames will be interchangeable on any of the four locations that you can put them on, um, on the dresser itself. What I did, um, because I was uh, just doing it for the first time, for the first two, it was rather willy-nilly. However, I picked up the magnet was how I placed it. But um, having done that already, I just made sure that there were matching pairs. So where there was a frame, there was at least a decorative panel that matched the polarity so that you could at least swap um, those two panels and... Um, and still have the option of, you know, moving things around and um, configuring it however you'd like. So there's always a way around things, but um, I would definitely recommend um, making sure that the polarity is the same uh, across all, uh, as you can see here, eight magnet locations. So all I've done is I've just temporarily taped down my um, decorative photo frames and that way I can just plop the magnets onto the back panel. This is um, where they're going to ultimately get attached. And the piece I'm working on is actually the album piece. So this is actually the piece that will be the front of the um, dresser. And once you um, kind of plop down those magnets, they'll, they'll find their correct orientation because there are magnets on the other end. Uh, and so you just place those down, let them find their location. And I'm using some score tape to um, hold those down. And here I'm not quite as worried about hiding or embedding the magnets um, into cardstock. So I'm just placing the magnets directly onto the panel and then I'll um, cover this entire panel with some decorative paper. It's on the inside of the album. It's um, not really a uh, central sort of, um, and here I'm just testing out making sure that 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 location works out properly. I can interchange the, the panels um, 
correctly and once those are in I'll go ahead and burnish that down but as I was saying this is just um, decorative and um, on the inside it's not going to be as visible or noticeable that there's that extra height of um, the magnet so I will try to address a little bit of that height differential by um, placing some thick cardstock between the magnets so that there isn't as much of a, um, a height difference there. So it's still going to look um, fairly finished and and you won't get the bumps you know of the magnets coming through. So um, I think what I used here was just scraps that were also two layers of 110 pounds. So it, it just about, for my magnets, it just about matches the thickness of my magnets. And um, again, I'll put double-sided dry adhesive all the way to the edge and some liquid adhesive in the center. So I found that that, that works pretty well. It gets things fairly flush, um, so that's pretty nice. But if you were to appear around the edges, you might still be able to see um, the magnets. I thought about using the little swing closures that I made earlier as a way of um, holding some photos, um, but they're rather large, and so they would work for sure, but um, it would take up a lot of space and you wouldn't be able to put as large of a photo there. So I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do there, whether I'll end up doing that or or just leave it plain. But here I'm going to decorate the um, uh, side of the mini album. This is actually where the spine is going to go. And um, I'm using a panel that you would... Um, they, there are dies that will cut a decorative panel for the side of your dresser. However, because um, our mini album is essentially uh, dividing the side of the dresser in two halves, I'm working on the second half right here. This is the spine to our second mini album that will get attached to the back of the dresser. I chose a different die. Um, to actually decorate the sides instead of using the die that will decorate the full um, side of the dresser. And this piece here is going to ultimately be the back of our um, mini album. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did before on the front where I temporarily tack down my decorative panels and they already have their magnets embedded in them. So as you saw, I was able to just kind of throw down the my little mini magnets. And these magnets are roughly 3 sixteenths of an inch, maybe just a little bit larger. And um, I just got them on Amazon. And they are fairly weak, I, I'll have to say. So, you know, I struggled to find a purpose to use them, but they did work out perfectly for this purpose. And so... Um, I'm going to do the exact same thing where I um, go ahead and get those tacked down with dry, strong adhesive, score tape um, is what I'll, I'll be using. And again, I'm finding some scraps, some of my 110 pound scraps. I'm going to double those up just so that I can match as much as possible the depth of the magnets and lay those down in the center. And that way, um, when I go to attach everything, it's going to be as flush as possible. So here I'm attaching the, what will be the spine to our second mini album that is um, that will uh, fold out from this dresser. And um, I'm going to start to to bring everything together here. So I'm using a combination of uh, red line tape, as you can see on the glue tabs. And, um, but I always kind of run a little bit of liquid adhesive as well, because I think the combination of the two makes for a nice um, 
instant grab, which you'll get from the dry adhesive, but you'll get a nice permanent stick from the liquid glue. So over time, this is going to hold up really well and you don't have to worry about that dry adhesive um, drying out and, and maybe coming apart later. So I'm just going to continue to glue these tabs down and, um, and there you can sort of see things start to come together a little. Now this panel here, I have created two of them and um, the purpose of this panel is that it's got, as you can see, four magnets running down what will be the outer edge of it. And those four magnets match up with the back cover of the mini album that flips out from the front of the dresser. And the reason why I put magnets here, and I use the exact same magnets that I did on my um, decorative and photo frame panels is um, it's going to hold the two mini albums together so that if you're handling or moving the dresser around, they will um, they will stay together a little bit better and not just kind of fall open. And you could definitely come up with different types of closures, a ribbon closure or um, whatever you like. However, because I want the illusion of this piece to still look from the outside to be a dresser, I wanted to um, really just find a uh, mechanism for keeping these together, but hidden, uh, a hidden mechanism so that it's not um, obtrusive and, and it doesn't break that illusion. So I've got the magnets and I just put um, these little decorative pieces um, right back into it. And I'm using um, these little tiles, as it were, came from all of uh, the layers, <laughs> multiple layers that I cut out of white cardstock to build up my um, frames and hide my magnets. I'm just using all of the pieces that fell out to just tile across this panel and it almost creates sort of a faux um, embossed look. And what I'm gonna do is actually um, to kind of mask the fact that there are magnets here, I'm going to just double, triple up on some of these tiles throughout the entire panel because the magnets are raised and um, by raising some of the tiles across the entire panel, it looks more intentional. It looks a little bit more um, uh, seamless. And it, when I make my next one, I will probably do the same thing or something similar. But um, what I'm going to do is actually add more than just the four because the four magnets hold it together okay. But I think it's going, these magnets are really weak. So I think um, it's going to benefit from maybe even doubling it up. And that way I can just intersperse the magnets throughout the panel and get a really good stick there. What I'm decorating here is the left hand side panel and even though that panel is um, a full width uh, panel, I'm decorating it in halves, uh, so to speak, because I want it to match with the other side. And the other side panel on the right side, that's where our two mini album uh, spines are. And so I just wanted to mimic that design there. And so here now I'm going to start to put on the decorative elements on the top piece. So I've just got um, all of my pieces cut out and I assembled these in the same way that I assembled the, um, the feet at the bottom of the dresser. So I have one full piece that's cut with the tabs and everything. And then I have um, multiple, two additional pieces where I've cut off the glue tabs and glued them to the back. That just makes everything a little bit more sturdy and you have all of those extra layers under that glue tab to um, lend extra support. 
on the top, it's not quite as important in, in the sense of、uh, support or carrying the weight of the、um, mini album. So you don't necessarily have to double up as I've done here. But the reason why I decided to double up and still you know, add those extra layers to the top pieces is because、um, I don't want this to feel flimsy. At the top here, I wanted to feel,、um, you know, if you were handling it, that you didn't need to be super precious or worried about crushing、uh, these pieces. So, having two, three layers of heavyweight cardstock plus the decorative layer on top of that makes it feel really substantial, really sturdy. And again, even though I already put some dry adhesive down, I'm still going to use some liquid adhesive, and that's going to make it、um, nice and permanent. And I would recommend if you have little clips that you clip those corner pieces together and、um, just kind of allow that to、um, dry nice and, and tight. That way you don't get.、Um, Uh, any gaps. And there is a piece of dye that will cut out a,、um, a matte layer that you can、um, glue right over top, and then that covers up all of those、um, inner workings, all the glue tabs. And so I did that on the top already, and I don't think I actually filmed myself doing it, but I、um, glued one of those decorative or、um, matte layers to the bottom as well, again, just to hide all of the glue tabs. So it's at this point when I started to put together the feet. Of the dresser, that I realized that I cannot glue that final、um, side of the feet in where my album is going to be or where the album spines are. Because if I glue that in, then I won't be able to open the mini albums. And、um, so that's why you see there on the right hand side, the, the feet、um, aren't in place yet because I was. When I realized that, I had to、uh, just take a moment and move on to something else as I thought about how I wanted to address that problem because I need the feet to be there because the dresser needs to look complete, but at the same time,、um, I need it to be able to open so that you can actually open the、um, mini albums. So,、uh, I'll get back to that in a bit. Here, what I'm doing is this is the decorative、um, matte layer for the side panel. And what I'm doing is laying ribbon down、um, right through the center and going all the way across. So, I'm leaving myself about six inches or so on either end. And、um, you could give yourself a longer length if you want and then cut it down、um, as you use it. And、um, I'll, I'll,、uh, you'll see what I mean towards the end. But here I'm just going to glue that in place. And the reason why there are ribbons here is so that when you close up your album, You can actually tie、uh, this shut from the back cover of each of the albums. And that way, again, everything is nice and secure. And as you go to open this up, your pages don't just fall out. So here I'm attaching to our、um, spine piece the album cover on、um, our back album piece. And I've already got a little bit of score tape that、um, I put on the back album cover, and that's to remind me to put some ribbon here. So often, when I think of these things, I will just put some、um, pencil markings or some score tape so that I remember where I intend to put magnets, where I intend to put ribbons, because oftentimes, As I'm actually doing the assembly, I'll forget about all of those things、um, in my eagerness to <laughs> see it all come together. So, having that score tape there,、um, or actually, I think I just wrote it out there, I, it's a nice reminder so that I know and I don't forget to do that. So, again, I'm gonna lay down some nice strong score tape and get this ribbon placed in the center. I'm using my,、um, my mat, my 
the grid on my uh, cutting mat to actually line this up as centered as possible. And as you can see, um, this will tie down nicely to one end of the ribbon that we left and the mini album from the front will get tied down uh, from the other end of the ribbon. So again, you can see sort of my pencil marks and um, written instructions to myself. And I'm gonna, again, line up uh, some score tape here and place my ribbon to really make sure that um, the, the entire sort of length of the ribbon that is getting attached to this is covered by score tape. And I'm just going to put the paper release liner right back over it because um, I'm not going to decorate these panels just yet. I just want to kind of get all of the um, mechanics in. So with this piece here, I um, have already started the album pages and the spine, but don't worry, I'll show you what I did um, when I go to put together the back album. I wanted to just trial run some um, new kind of album making techniques that I haven't tried before. And I don't think I've seen other people do this, so I was 100% confident um, in it so i wanted to try it out first before filming and um so i'll get to that but i all i did there was on the side panel the um section that's two and a half inches wide i went ahead and glued that down to the um side of our dresser and now our you can see our dresser is really starting to come together and you can see how these panels are interchangeable you can choose how you want to um, display whether you want your photo frames on the front or you want the decorative panels on the front and um and then here um i am going to put the side piece on the left side. So this is the side that is full and um, does not have our album spines. And that can get attached right to the sides and right to the bottom of the legs just fine. And here's what I mean by putting clips in um, to hold things in place as they dry because that will um, help to keep the, that connection nice and um, tight as pardon my puppy. <laughs> and so now that I have my albums in, I'm figuring out that, well, what I really need is another magnet closure. So again, I'm going to use my small little magnets and I'm going to go ahead and um, glue the one side down and that will be um, a hinge, so to speak. And then on the side on the front, I'll go ahead and add some magnets to um, to make a closure that you can then open and close whenever you want to actually look at your albums. Now, um, if I had the foresight to to realize that I needed to do this in advance, what I would have done instead, and what I would recommend, and um, I'll do this on my next one, is on that front leg, because I did double up on um, the cardstock to strengthen that leg. What I will do on my next one is exactly what I did on my front panels where I punched a 3 16 inch hole or really two of them into those extra layers and then embed um, my small magnets into that because as you can see the um, with the extra thickness of the magnets it's causing that leg to kind of bow out a little bit and um, instead of uh, being nice and flush and so if you use the same method that I use when I uh, showed you how to create the photo frames that go on the front and the back of the dresser you can embed those magnets and have a nice smooth flush um, surface and that way the magnets won't um, kind of push you know that one leg out so this is pretty much our album, um, you know, more or less complete, but 
I am going to go ahead and um, I finished all of the pages on the front uh, half of the album and now I'll show you how to do that for the back album. Alright, so what you'll need and one of the things that I was trying that was new is making my hidden hinge spine out of Tyvek instead of cardstock. So I have a strip here that I have cut to three and a half by roughly nine and a quarter. And what I'm going to do is score my first line at one and a half inches. And you can see I've already done um, that one score line. And then what I'm going to do is um, score the gusset and the um, page hinge um, in a repeat pattern. So basically I'm going to score one eighth of an inch and that's going to be the gusset, the space between each page. And then I'm going to score three eighths of an inch from that line, three eighths of an inch from um, that line. So those two sections that are three eighths of an inch wide are going to be the, um, the hinge that's going to hold our page and then you just repeat that so you go one eighth of an inch for the space between the pages and then score two sections that are three eighths of an inch from each other that those two sections will glue together and be the hinge that holds our page and you just do that for as many pages as you need that's the basics of how you create one of these hidden hinge spines and you can always tailor this to um, whatever size um, and however thick of a album you need so in this case I am uh, creating six album pages for my back album. If you recall, my front album was actually seven pages. And the reason why the front album has um, one extra page is because I did have to leave some allowance for the magnets where uh, the two covers from the back album and the front album uh, meet up. So that does take up some space. And so I um, took some space away from my back album. So it's going to end up being um, a little bit um, less wide than our front. And I don't remember if I told you the dimensions for this back album piece. So um, it should be three and 11 sixteenths of an inch um, high and seven inches wide. And you wanna score at um, five inches and at six and one eighth of an inch. And so that's gonna give you um, the back cover of the album and the spine. And um, technically this, um, if you cut it that way, you'll have a glue tab that you can then glue to your um, to your dresser. Um, what I did when I created this piece, that's how I cut this piece initially, and then I realized I needed to make the spine a little bit um, thinner to accommodate the magnets between the two covers of the front and the back album. And so that's why, as you saw me construct it, I have my spine as a separate piece. But really, you could have your spine and the glue tab that attaches to the back of your dresser cut from one piece. So moving on with um, our um, hidden hinge spine construction. Now normally, if you've ever seen me do this in any of my other mini albums, um, I, you probably will have seen me put score tape on um, all of the um, the sections that are meant to be glued together to create our hinge and then go back and kind of um, score everything um, at the same time and then take another pass and uh, attach everything, glue everything down. 
Instead with this, because Tyvek is so thin, it's a little bit slippery, I'm just doing this one by one. I'm scoring and gluing down one by one as I go because I found when I did this the first time that it's really, really easy to kind of get askew. And um, mainly that's because when you score your Tyvek, um, the thickness of that score line leaves a lot of room for error when you actually go to fold. So every time I'm folding, I'm paying attention to the bottom of um, that bottom line. And you'll see me occasionally line it up with my grid mat even to make sure that everything is still square, everything is still lining up nice and straight. And I found that it's easier to... Um, to fold and burnish each of these score lines as I go. And um, you'll see me burnish it a lot. So I fold all of my hinges one way, burnish, fold all of my hinges another way, and burnish. And I'm making frequent checks just to make sure that everything is still lining up nice and um, straight and at 90 degree angles. So, the reason why I chose Tyvek as um, the hidden hinge spine uh, material instead of using cardstock like I would normally is because um, Tyvek is resistant to being torn. It's a very strong material that um, over time as these pages bend back and forth, it's, it's not going to tear. It's gonna hold up, whereas cardstock, might eventually tear if somebody tugs at it and tries to tear it, you know, it could be torn. And that's not the case with Tyvek. You can try to tear Tyvek intentionally and it will not tear. So um, for that reason, it's, I always use it whenever I feel like I need to stabilize any sort of hinge or flap that's going to get a lot of movement, get a lot of, you know, back and forth movement or a lot of stress. And um, so that's one reason to use it. The other reason to use it is that it's also a very lightweight material. So um, it's not going to create bulk where your spine is and where your pages get attached. And that's going to ultimately um, help the pages lay really, really flat. So I, as you saw there, just um, use my score tape again um, for my larger roll. And I've just lined the entire um, um, hidden hinge mechanism with score tape and I kind I lost um, some of my uh, fold lines my score lines a little bit so I'm folding again just just to make sure that um, as this goes over uh, and glues onto the back piece of our dresser because it does have that one to one and a half inch overhang that's gonna go right onto our back um, dresser and I'm just this is cut to be um, just a sh you know shy of the full height of the dresser so you should be able to kind of line it up and whether my folds were um, somehow askew or maybe I attached it at, at an angle that is askew I did end up with um, uh, this kind of looking a little bit crooked so all I did was I just trimmed off a section so that it doesn't overhang too much um, outside that margin and get too close to the border. Um, it's okay though because I will put decorative paper over those um, glue hinges so um, so that all of those glue tabs will get hidden. And because Tyvek is so thin, that also sort of reduces all of these um, layers and glue tabs that um, are necessary to kind of attach the hinge into um, the album. So the back piece, um, as you might have already seen, it did already have... Um, uh, I did already place um, the, let's see, I think there's two layers of cardstock there already. So this, this decorative panel will be the third layer. You could do this in a slightly different order and, um, and just have the two layers, 
but I knew that I was going to put a decorative panel here, so that's why I didn't mind doing it in the order that I did. Um, so the decorative piece, I just cut to the, um, on the inside piece, I just cut it a little bit smaller and you can just trim as needed just to make sure that everything can still, um, you know, fold up nicely. With this piece here, I cut it to the full height of the uh, panel, which is 3 and 11 sixteenths of an inch. But in terms of the width of the panel, um, the width of the panel is 5 inches, but because this gets folded, you have to kind of allow room for that fold. And so I just cut that to, I think, 1 eighth inch shy, so 4 and 7 eighths. So here's how I make my um, pocket pages. So I took a piece of acetate that I cut to um, three and five eighths of an inch. So this is just a smidge um, uh, shorter than the full height of the dresser. And I cut a length that was 10 inches long. I scored that in half at the five inch mark and then folded it. And I just trimmed off the um, the two loose ends. So I just took the folded piece of acetate and measuring um, from the folded edge, I trimmed it to four and seven eighths because as I mentioned, the full width of that, um, the front of the dresser is five inches but these pages have to sit within that and have allowance for the spine and everything. So that's why I cut it uh, one eighth of an inch shy of that uh, five inch mark. And so the reason why I don't cut the acetate so that it's exactly the length that I need is um, because I just wanna make sure that, that the loose, the two uh, loose ends across from the folded edge are nice and straight and flush because those, um, that end is what's going to get attached to the spine. So with this um, piece here, I've taken a um, another piece of just white cardstock that's also cut to uh, three and five eighths and um, by four and seven eighths. So you can see it's a perfect fit with our acetate. And the little aperture that um, I cut out of the center measures four inches wide by two and three quarters of an inch high. So I just have two, um, two frames that I'll uh, attach from the front and the back. And that's going to frame up our page really nicely. And on the acetate sheet, you can see I've already run a line of um, double-sided adhesive just along the bottom. And I uh, ran that adhesive all the way to just about a quarter of an inch, half an inch from the edge. And that allows me to kind of still slip this, um, the open edge of our page over the spine that we've created. So I'm going to peel up a little bit of uh, the score tape liner from the spine, get it nice and um, positioned, and then I can peel up the rest and peel up the back side once that front side is attached. So um, you know, be sure to also wipe down your acetate because once you have this in place, you're not going to be able to um, clean up on the inside, or at least not as easily anyways. And so I'll just repeat that and do it again. So just, um, I just peel off a little bit just to get started so that I can position it. And it's easier if you peel up from the end that is more open. So that's what I start to do from, um, uh, for the rest of the pages. And that way you can, you know, really get that where you want it. And then once you have that first side down, um, it's really easy to, to get the back side because it's already all lined up for you. The beauty of using the acetate, which was a first for me, um, with album, uh, making is that you get nice clear pockets and then because I'm giving this away as a gift it's going to be so easy for whoever gets this to um, just you know 
slot some photos in. And, um, you know, they can put two photos in, one uh, facing the front of the page and the other photo facing the back of the page. And they don't need anything special. They don't need, I don't need to give them any photo mats. Um, they uh, don't need any photo corners or anything like that. So this is going to be as easy to use as a photo album that they buy you know, from the store. You just slip your photos in and you get the um, added benefit that the photos are behind acetate. So they are also a little bit protected. Um, whereas usually I would stick uh, photo corners onto the page base and that allows them to slip their photos um you know, behind those or into the photo corners, but that leaves the photo still kind of exposed, I suppose, to the elements. And, um, and this, you know, protects them. It's, it's behind the acetate. It's still very easy to change out the photos if they want. And all in all, I think it turned out really well to, um, to use, uh, acetate as my pocket pages. And, um, because I took a long piece that I just folded in half, it's also really easy to slot the photos in because, um, it's only got tape, you know, kind of along the edge where it's attached to the spine, but the photo can uh, run the full length of um, that folded edge. So, so you'll be able to get your photo, uh, you know, kind of completely hidden by the white frame, which gives it a little bit um, nicer of a finish as well. So, um, this last page, for some reason, just had, um, I think, a little bit of dry adhesive on it. But if you ever find that to be the case, I keep just a mini bottle of uh, Goo Gone <laughs> on my craft table. And it's um, it's an adhesive remover. So I just, you know, um, wet a, a paper towel or I, I also and use um, workshop towels like the blue cloth towels and um, and you can clean up your acetate really easily uh, with a little bit of that goo gone. It's the same thing that I use to clean adhesive off of my scissors as well. Um, when I cut through my adhesive tapes or foam tapes with my scissors, um, sometimes that that adhesive residue will gum up my scissors and I use Goo Gone to clean those up. So I miscounted my pages <laughs> and so I'll finish that up later, but there is the one last page that um, needs to be created. But here you can see um, how my, what my intention is for these ribbons. So the idea is that um, you fold this in and then you tie this ribbon. Now, I mentioned when I placed this ribbon in that you may want to cut yourself an extra long piece and then um, you know cut it down to length because one end ends up being a little bit short and so if you want to tie a really nice bow that's equal you need a longer length of ribbon. Um, especially with this back one, because it's right in that back corner, it can be a little bit tricky to, to tie a bow, but really it can be just a simple knot as well. The, the reason to have it there is so that as you're handling the album, as you're opening and closing it, things aren't just falling open. And, um, this way everything feels um, more intentional. It's it's on your schedule when <laughs> things open and close. So um, here I just have a little template that um, I cut to let the um, recipient know that they should remove that piece and, and put a photo there. Otherwise they might just think, oh, well, this is just a different decorative uh, panel that's blank <laughs> and not realize that it's actually intended for a photo frame. And the stamp that I have that says place photo here, I just recently got that from one of uh, the Papercraft Society 
boxes. Um, it was designed or curated by Helen Griffin, and it's all about mini album making. And uh, one of the main reasons why I bought the entire kit was for that stamp, because as many mini album making supplies as I have, I don't have a stamp that says place photo here. So I usually just hand write something similar or, you know, put the size of the photo or something like that so that they know. But it's really nice to finally have a stamp that I can use because it just looks so much neater and um, more professional. So on um, both of my frames, I'm just cutting and uh, trimming down the other the other piece here. But I'm gonna go ahead and slip that little um, note and you can see that the um, little insert that has the place photo here instruction, it's hanging outside of the photo frame and that's so that you can actually pull that up because I don't have um, and I think if I were to do this again I'll try to actually punch out a little thumb notch so that if you place a photo in you'll be able to get it out um, more easily but as it is I was worried about not being able to get that um, to easily get that uh, placeholder out of the frame. So I just left it uh, uh, hanging out the top and that way they know they, they should remove that. So here is our dresser mini album complete and I really, really love how this turned out. I've got this little swinging magnetic closure at the bottom here and um, once you kind of unlock that, then you have your two mini albums, one from the front, which has seven pages, so that'll fit 14 photos, and um, the back mini album has six pages, so that'll fit um, 12 photos, and if, um, I still need to decide whether or not to add any photo mats or anything to um, those large panels that are kind of the um, front and back covers of our mini albums because those are locations where they can place um, pretty large photos. You could get like a three by four photo back there. But I don't know that I'll do that because I kind of like the nice um, clean look of it as it is. But that is my project complete. So um, if you like this video, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you want to catch new videos as I post them to my channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get a notification whenever I post new videos. Thank you so much for watching and until my next video, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye!